React Native reanimated. Wow, that's some new stuff, very few materials, and definitely not easy for beginners. Just the fact that this thing exists and that you should be using reanimate it instead of the animations library took me weeks to find out. So I started with pan responder animated library and then I found gesture react native gesture handler and then I found reanimated. And now I'm like, okay, well, it'd be great if somebody could tell me this from the start. It'd be great if there are some beginner friendly videos. And today I'm gonna make one of these. So here is something that is beginner friendly, but not too beginner friendly. You'll see what I mean. So here I made this box and you can see that as I drag it, it'll bounce back. You see if I do that, it'll bounce back. If I do that, bounce back. How do I do that? Well, you will see. So this actually bouncing back um, requires the native to call into um, JavaScript thread, which is something that is uh, impossible or very difficult to do in animated API. Um, also, animated API does have some imperative code. This is completely declarative. Um, I don't know exactly what that means, but uh, if you understand what that means, you can explain it to me. But uh, let's let's go through what's going on. So here you can see that I'm using uh, the gesture handler, which requires a link and a Android setup. I should really show the Android setup because I actually asked that question, and uh, and then I found out oh you're supposed to set it up in Android like this. Like I didn't even know that. So after you do the React Native link, you need to go to the main activity.java and you need to add this uh, React Activity Delegate. You need to add this. Okay? After you add that, the gesture is good to go. Okay? And in React Native Animated, you just uh, link it. All right. Once you grab the React Native Animated, you need these things. You can see that value, event, uh, thing like these things are replaced from the animated library so you don't use uh, the animated library uh, you don't even touch the animated library you just use everything that comes with react native reanimated okay so what are we looking at here uh, you think this is a lot of code but this is uh, nothing compared to imperative code so the key thing is you need to wrap this uh, this view, this uh, green box, you need to wrap it inside this pan gesture handler because this pan gesture handler is hooked onto its children. So the children uh, must be there. And you can see that this children, um, not too much is actually happening here, right? You know, we have the styles.box, which is defined here. And then we're telling it how it should transform. Uh, and the transformation, this translate X is how it moves in the horizontal direction. And then this translate Y is how it moves in the vertical direction. So uh, you can see that um, these two things needs to be put into separate objects um, as per Facebook's uh, animation transformation requirements. And what, what you can see is that these two things are transforming based on what uh, trans x value is and trans y value is. And what are these values? These values are in a function called interaction, which I defined. But I'll come back to that later. Uh, first, we want to look at something, uh, how the pan gesture handles the, um, the, uh, the touch event. So we can see here that on gesture event is when that event has happened and on handler state change is for a continuous action for example pan gesture action uh, is continuous because the user is dragging their fingers across so it's a continuous action so we're in this case we're calling the, the same function and you can see that here 
we are calling beyond gesture event on line 73. What are we saying here? This event is so hard to understand. Like, I don't think the documentation has done a good job explaining it. It took me like a couple of days to know what's going on. What this event is basically saying is we're mapping this uh, native event onto the value that we want it to store. So uh, on gesture, so the, uh, the event function that came out of the reanimated library have access to native events translation X, native events translation Y, and the state. So these are the things that the gesture handler picked up from native, and they're storing it in translation X, Y, and state. And we want these, we want these value to map to uh, gesture X, Y, or state. So these are our, our variables. We want these native events to map to our variables. That's how we grab it. That's how these values uh, keeps on continuously updating when you're panning your fingers around. Okay, so that's animated event. So that's that works the same way uh, in React Native Reanimated and the um, traditional animated library. Okay, so here what gets funny. So we have this interaction function, and what this interaction function does is it uh, based on the state and where the position is, it's going to decide what translate x is, and it's going to uh, it's going to decide what translate y is. So these two values tells us how this box should be moving around the screen. So, what are the key things that you need to see here? The key things that you need to see is this interaction function. It's quite a bit. Uh, I've learned that you know to read code, it's better to read um, what the code is returning first, then reading the variables at the top. So instead of reading these variables, because it's hard to understand what these variables are doing um, when you don't read what is actually returning. So the key thing to remember is that the interaction returns this function, and this condition function returns the value which uh, which is what trans x or trans y is. So trans x and so the gesture of y and x gets passed in, and the state gets passed in. So in React Native Reanimated, it has this condition function. And what this condition function is doing is, is checking state. So whenever I see a condition function, the top is always checking state. Like, you know, if you're doing, if you're, if you're doing a tap gesture recognizer, you're checking to see if the tap has happened. If it's pan, you're checking to see if the state is active. Uh, if it's drag, you, like it's always checking to make sure you're in the right state. So like you're always looking to see if you're in the right state. So you know if you're are you in an active state? If you're in an active state, then that must mean the user is currently dragging, right? So we want the box to move to where the user is dragging. If it's not in the current state. Uh, then we want the box to return to its original position. Uh, something else that they don't tell you is um, you also need to correct for um, you also need to correct for where the starting position of the box. Because if you don't, the box is always going to start. Uh, the box is always going to start uh, not at where you want it to. It's harder to see here. Um, but I'll show you what I mean. Uh, so here you see have the, you see this array syntax, which is like very confusing. So this is just a sequence of events. It's like a pipeline, right? So we're saying uh, if the state is active, we're going to perform these sequence of events in order, and we're going to return the output of this last position, which is uh, this uh, this last element, which is just setting the position that we defined here. Uh, and then here, also, we see another set of uh, things. Um, I purposely left it. I purposely didn't extract it so we can see exactly what's going on. And let's look at the simple case. So if the finger, if my finger is on the box, what is it doing? It's checking to see, uh, are we in a dragging state? 
if we are in the if we are not in the dragging state, then we should be in the dragging state because the state is active, right? We should be the user is dragging now, and then we want to update our position. We want to update our uh, current position to where the start is. So start is an offset, right? Because uh, we need to remember where the starting position is because if we don't remember the starting position, then it's going to always start from uh, zero, which is uh, going to, it's going to, it's going to feel very weird because your finger is not on the box. Every time you click on the box, the, the box jumps back to the start, which is not where your finger is at. So you need to make that adjustment. This stop clock is like something else that takes a long time to understand. Uh, I might not be able to explain explain it perfectly here. Uh, what we're saying here is a uh, clock is like this like special reanimated value. Um, and what happens is what we want to do is we don't we don't want it to track uh, we don't want it to uh, it's like a driver that's driving the the uh, uh, some sort of value. And here because our finger is active, we don't want to drag it. Um, if my explanation is difficult to understand, um, it's probably a good idea for you to spend a little more time to look into it and or ask me questions uh, because I don't expect you to just understand what clock is just based on my um, brief surface level explanation. And this DT, this DT is calculating how the box should come back from where your finger is to its original position. And we can see that dt is defined by the clock, the difference in each frame, the time, the, uh, the milliseconds between each frame divided by 1,000. So that's the, 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 the difference in time. So that's like uh, difference in time between each frame. Uh, and then what we want to and then what we want to do is we want to set the position to where the start is and to where the input translation is. So input translation is, is the input to this interaction. So now we return the position. And it's kind of weird that we have to do this step here. You know, it's like, okay, so this step calls this divide clock uh, it, it caused it, it calculates this difference. Why do we need this uh, value from the clock? You know that's something that uh, I still haven't figured out yet. So if we look at the next condition, so if the gesture state is not active, that means the user has released their finger. Okay. So what, what do we do? Uh, we set dragging to zero because you know uh, user is not dragging. And here we want to start the clock. When we start the clock, it's going to begin this driver and it's going to change the value to how we want it to change. And how do we want it to change? Uh, well, first we need to set up what velocity is. So here you can see that if the user is moving to here, uh, then we want the velocity to be negative because we want it to go back to the left. And if the user is at this position, then we want the velocity to be positive because we want to go back to the right. Uh, and then so we need to so we can kind of like need to decide uh, where our position is, right? Because as soon as you do a drag, it's going to set the position. So here we can see that uh, if the position is less than zero, then we are positive velocity go to the right. If it's greater than zero, then we want it to go to the left. So have a negative velocity. And the same thing works uh, for upside down, for uh, top and down. So then, OK, so then we do this. OK, so, so now with the velocity is set, what's next? Uh, what we want to do next is we want to check to see, uh, we want to define the stopping definition. How does this box stop? So we we see to see uh, we check to see if the position is within a threshold. Uh, 
because uh, if the position is zero, you could what you could do is you could check to see if the position is zero, uh, then you stop it. But I think we want to cap, we want to um, get it to stop before it gets there. So we, like when it gets really really close to zero, then we're like okay, we want to set the speed to zero, and then we'll be able to get it to stop. So in both directions, if it's uh, if it's uh, if it's very close to one or negative one, we're gonna stop the clock. We're gonna stop the driver, set the velocity to zero, set the position to zero. Uh, now, it's not clear to me what the explanation for that is. There is a blog, um, but they go much in depth about bouncy effects and all that stuff, which is not something that I care about right now. So this is the implementation that they decided to go with. So you check to see if the position is within a threshold that's okay with you. If, if, if the box is that close to the destination, then you slow down, basically, right? If it's very close, you slow down. Set the velocity to zero, set the position to zero, stop the clock, stop the driver, and then we're gonna, and then, and then, uh, and then after, and then after this condition is set, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep on updating the position. So if this condition is true, we're gonna stop. Otherwise, um, we keep going, right? So here we continue to set the position, um, and the, the, the way that the position is set is by multiplying velocity to time. Velocity, velocity to time give us um, the distance per, um, per frame. And that's going to be added to the position, and that's going to be set to the position, right? And if this, if if we're so close to the destination, we're within position threshold, then we want to um, set the velocity position to zero, and then this thing is just going to be adding zero, and then this is going to return zero, and that's how we're able to achieve the rebound animation, hundred percent imperative free. <sighs> in React Native. Pretty amazing, but also a lot of work. Uh, I think I think we are at the frontier and um, that's why that's why um, documentations and all that stuff is still um, yet to be caught up. But I'm around, ask me questions and you know we'll see we'll see where, where this takes us. <laughs>